right, so this is a, a, a pretty monumental day here. We're on the Mayweather Channel with uh, one of the best fighters on the PBC brand, done by the uh, top-ranked janitor. How awesome is that? <laughs> <laughs> the OG. Um, no, I'm here with 21-0, uh, and 0, uh, what are you, top two welterweight in the world right now, Cody Crawley? I, I hope so. Uh, so. You got a you got a big fight coming up, which we're not going to be able to announce here, but I'll I'll break the news when when we get into the interview. So stay tuned to close to the end of the interview, and I'll I'll it's, give away the opponent. Tyson Fury. <laughs> I'll give away the opponent. So, um, Cody, when's the, the date of your your fight coming up? You know what? I don't even know. I know a month. Oh yeah, I know a month. I'm fighting in February for the WBC Eliminator uh, at a welterweight, 147 pounds. As everyone knows, it's a pretty stacked division. Um, oh, I was about to say you were gonna. I was about to break the news. He was fighting Errol Spence, but I guess mm -hmm. you know, that just fucking ruined everything. Uh, you know what? This fight could solidify something like that, which would be pretty fucking awesome. Now, now, Cody, I, I, I'm not gonna sugarcoat. I've seen a couple recent inter interviews of you, and I don't want to ask you the the g general run of the mill questions that are here. But there's a good chance Terence Crawford moves up to 154. There's a good chance Errol Spence moves up to 154, which would leave your division wide open, four titles up for grabs. Uh, I, I'm, of course, I'm going to ask you who you like to fight, but for you, who you've emerged as a star in the sport recently, um, what is that like mega fight? Should Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence move up, where you can make a lot of money and, and then the boxing fans would uh, tune in? Well, that mega fight right now is Earl Spence. No, no, without Earl With, Spence and Terrence Crawford. I know, it, it just kind of uh, leaves the door wide open, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. And right now, there's been so many like gatekeepers and stars that have been on top for so long that are on their way out, but they've held those positions that these guys coming up, you got me, you got Boots, um, you got a couple other great up and comers mm -hmm. that really the world doesn't quite know yet, and we haven't been tested like that yet against some great legends. Gotcha. So to say who do I want to fight once those guys leave, there really isn't anybody left there that um, isn't up and coming. Well, you you, you guys get to, you mentioned yourself, boot, yourself, so Boots, and I, I think right now Boots would be one of the, the, would be a career highlight fight for me. And I think it would be a great fight for a world title. Now a lot of people, and, and listen, he's from my hometown, Boots Ennis, uh, shout out to him. Uh, I think he's great. I just, me personally, I I don't think he's unbeatable. I think everybody has a kink in their armor. Uh, do you see him as unbeatable? I mean, you obviously unbeatable? potentially being no, yeah, unbeatable no. As, as as being a potential rival to him. You are a rival in the in the division. Watching him fight, do you see, you know, things you can capitalize on if you were to ever fight, and you know, obviously would help you pick up a victory should you guys fight. There is kink in everyone's armor armor because nobody is perfect. Everybody makes a mistake. And you see it time and time again in somebody's career. They always make a mistake. Um, and somebody capitalizes on it. And I'm not going to quite say where I think his holes are in his armor. Mm. Um, because, quite frankly, I want to go and be the one to penetrate those holes. Gotcha. But well, that doesn't sound good. Penetration. <laughs> <laughs> Penetrating them all. Penetration huh? is key here. Um, Isn't it supposed to be chink in the in the? We're using uh, Cody's a different. Or is that or a not, different I'm animal? A, I'm a different. No, animal. you said kink, and then you said kink. I think it's supposed to be chink in the armor. Well, we're. we're but maybe gonna, that's racist. No, I don't no, know. I, I don't put a kink in an armor because <laughs> that means the armor's still there. I penetrate the armor. Oh, which penetrate means, the holes. Which means that there is no armor there. Okay. You, you blast right through it. Right. Sorry. Continue. I'm sorry. Um. But that is a fight that I would love to have, and I would love for it to be a, a world title fight. Um, it doesn't make any sense, because I've had a lot of people like, Cody, why don't you fight Boots? You fight Boots. I fought the number one contender for the IBF who is undefeated um, just for that positioning and to solidify myself as a welterweight, because I knew I could do it. But then I get back put number 14. So obviously... It doesn't make sense to take chances for rankings and positions. And when you have world champions that will not fight a man, why would I go fight him for no no reward? Just, okay, I beat him, and then what? Oh, well, maybe he wasn't all that. Maybe he wasn't all that great. And, okay, well, I don't get moved up in rankings or anything like that. I still get screwed. 
So right now, I'm just fighting at what makes sense for Cody Crowley. And Cody Crowley is trying to become a world champion. So I have no hesitation. I will sign a contract today to fight Boots. We fighting for a world title. I will sign that contract today. So I think that if both Earl um, and Crawford move up, you have such a, a blank, beautiful canvas for some fights to be made that have been brewing for years and they just haven't had the opportunity. So quite frankly, I think the wick is lit and it's only a matter of time before the explosion happens, and that's 2023. And he's already speaking in the third person. So no, and listen, be... Cody, guess what, Cody? You go, <laughs> you go through his story and stuff, and we'll save that for another time. Yeah. But, but the welterweight division, and I'm going to give you, like, you know, a forecast on the future. You know, you got a pretty good fight, Virgil Ortiz and Stanley Onis. That was actually another a guy. Two great fighters. You I were, would, I would love to fight Stanley Onis guys. were supposed to fight, and, you know, the winner of that obviously comes out as the, probably the front runner because of the, the competition level as being one of the top welterweights in the division. And then, you know, uh, Josh Taylor, who is the undisputed uh, junior welterweight champion, he's going to be moving up from what I hear after his rematch with Catterall, which is, that's, excuse me, that's a star, you know, to, I think, enter the, the division. So, you know, you have your guys in there um, internationally. You represent in, well, I don't know. You've been in the United States over 10 years now. So eight, are you? Eight. I'm can, actually, you know what? I just got my permit. Residency. No, I met you in America. When did I meet you? Two thousand third, fourteen. 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 That's right. Fourteen. Eight years I've been here. This is my eighth years of pro. So in ten years, you're you're an official American. So right now he's representing. I still uh, got Canada on my he's back. He's a Canuck. He's representing Canada right Canada now. Canada on my back. Where at in Canada? Uh, Peterborough. 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 Yep. I used to go out of Toronto. Oh, okay. I used amazing. to I used to sneak over the border to Windsor when I was eighteen or nineteen to, to yeah. drink. So. Tell me more about Windsor. What are more of your experiences in Windsor? Been a long time. What else? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Not about me. Not um, about me. So, all right. So, with that, I, I mean, I just wanted to touch on that. No, um, I don't know who Cody's opponent is, and even if I did, I'm not going to say anything. It's um, but I'm just happy to see my friend, you know, in this position. I know him and his trainer, uh, Evan Kaysen, believe since the beginning. And yeah, man, it's I been just, a long road. It no is, one, no it one's is. seen this coming. No one's seen me going in. You know, what you've been through, to be honest with you, even I'm just saying what you've been through the couple years, like, uh, an average man couldn't handle what you've been through. But even before then, the stuff you've been through, um, I, I give you a, but uh, it I commend you for coming back where it is. So, it but does, that's for his documentary. To it doesn't me. rhyme with Sturgill Bortiz, though. No no, 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 no. No, it's a good fight. It's a tough fight. I know that for a fact because they don't put him in there. But it's you know another. Or Coots Dennis doesn't rhyme with that. Um, it, yeah, it does. <laughs> you know, we we it, it, it actually during this interview, yeah. we'll let you guys figure out in the comments. We did mention his next opponent, so we're just I don't oh, know if I should, I should have said that. So you guys interpret that however you like, and we'll see that fight happen in February. And I got one final question. If you were so, to fight Frank Steya, both go out, how long would Frank last? Like right now if you went out there? Because you're giving up weight. Cody doesn't spar I I or box nice. I couldn't hit him. Yeah. I couldn't hit him. So uh, the dude's got too big of a heart and he looks out for us fighters. So when you see people going out of their way to give fighters a ride to the gym, to pick them up from the airport, to go take them to get groceries, you don't see guys going out of their way that much in the boxing world. I, f I feel like so. So and you don't agree that he was one of the fourteen worst people in boxing, like one um, boxing pundit. Yeah, two thousand eighteen. He was one of the. He got voted for that. Yeah, yeah. So there's awesome. awards for being one of the. He worst. was actually, Bro. I think, number seven or number no, eight. No, but worst. listen, who's in it? Al Heyman was number. I think Lou number one. No, Lou DeBello was number one. one. Heyman was number two. I was at like number seven. So yeah. I was in. I thought I was in good. Hall of Fame company. Well, yeah. bro, if you can't beat him, join him. Fuck shit. Yeah. I'd rather be in. The, I, I wonder who's the best. So I hope that guy who made that worst list in 2018 make a best list. I'd like to see who our, yeah. our real competition yeah. is. I couldn't fight him. I love him. I think he's doing tremendous things for all these yeah. fighters that fly in from all around the world. So my hat's off to the OG Frank Stay. 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 Yeah, however you stay want to say it. it. Yeah, nobody knows me. Um, just call him the OG. Name. There's a reason why he doesn't take off the toque. All right, first time on our channel, we appreciate it. Where can people uh, follow you? 
Just Cody Crowley Boxing. I keep it simple. Uh, I'm not that big on social media, but Instagram, that's where I'll be plugged in. And in Vegas, you Yeah, follow his journey. He's got a great spiritual journey. Yeah, I say, he looks more like an MMA guy in Vegas no, uh, no, than a he boxer. Does, he does. He's real good on the yoga and, and, and everything. And he, you know, um, any fighters out there, you know, like I said, you, uh, you've you been through some stuff. This guy's been through it. You know what I'm saying? And he, he's found his peace and his way to cope with the world. And he loves it. You know, he's called me here uh, in, in some situations and... and Help me calm down. So, you know, that's, that's my Caught man right some here. situations. That doesn't sound too good. You, <laughs> you know, walk in on him. And a lot of penetration. <laughs> a lot of kink, holes. And kinkiness. It's very kinky and penetration. And, you know, penetrative in this uh, in this interview. But, no, Cody, All right. um, thanks Co- for having me on yeah. with the OG. We'll see you guys in February. There's going to be fireworks. All right. Appreciate it. Frank Stee and uh, Cody Crowley. All right. Appreciate it. <laughs>